Hi there, Year 9. Another online sociology lesson for you. Today we're going to be continuing to look at the functionalist views of the family, specifically the nuclear family, and why the nuclear family for functionalists is the most important and best family type. To start with, let's have a quick recap over what we have already looked at with Murdoch and his four functions. Without using your notes, can you list the four functions of Murdoch's family? Um, and can you briefly describe what each of those functions were? I'm going to give you a few minutes for that. So pause the video and then press play again when you are ready. OK, so according to Murdoch, the four functions of the nuclear family following the EARS acronym are educational, economic, reproductive and sexual. And just really, quick, really briefly going over what these um, each functions mean. Educational is about socialization. It's about the family bringing children up with the norms and values of society and making sure that children are successful members of society. The economic function is the fact that the adults in the family, at least the adults that work in the family, are providing uh, stability and security for all of its members, housing, food, clothing, cars, shelter, etc. Um, and the argument in, in Murdoch's four function of the family is that the uh, nuclear family is better placed for doing this than families such as a lone parent family um, because you are able to pool more resources together. The reproductive function of the family is very simple, it's making new human beings, new members of society and again at the time of writing Murdoch was in a world where IVF wasn't a thing or at least wasn't um, sort of in, in production at the time and therefore the easiest way of a family reproducing was to be within a nuclear family setup um, and sexual uh, function of the family is less about reproduction and more about generating a bond of commitment between two people which in turn leads to a stable family which in turn leads to a stable society because remember functionalists believe that the family is at the heart of society if family is successful and stable and happy then society will be successful and stable and happy. And we'll look at that a little bit more today. That's Murdoch's four functions. We're now going to move on to looking at another theorist called Talcott Parsons. He is another American functionalist writing in the 1950s, and he has two functions of the family. OK, so half the number that Murdoch has. I'd like you to start by writing this as your title. And you can see that I have got an arrow going downwards. Um, I want you to draw that as well, and we're going to write around it. Okay, it's not um, a straight down, but it's kind of slanting downwards. And we're going to use this to do a little diagram to explain what Parsons believes about the family in general. So to start with, it's important to recognise that when he was writing in the 1950s, and we can still see this in modern day um, Britain and America now, Parsons recognised that over time, many of the original functions of the nuclear family have been replaced by other social institutions. So what we mean by this is, if we think about the nuclear family throughout history, we think about the nuclear family in Victorian times, Jacobean times, Elizabethan times, um, Tudors, etc, etc, we can see that a lot of the time, children within the family were educated from home or clothing, food, things like that were made in the family home. Families had uh, vegetables growing in the back garden and families would sew their own clothes. So the family was very what we call self-sufficient. It looked after its own members um, in terms of education and also economic support, food and clothing. But over time, most children, the vast majority of children, rather than being educated by the family, leave the family home to go to school. And the vast majority of people over time have stopped making their own clothes and growing their own food and instead rely on other institutions such as supermarkets and clothes shops to purchase those items from. So things that the family used to do have declined over time. So as I've said, children used to be educated at home. Now that happens in the school and the family used to grow food and make clothes for its members but now most families buy food and clothes from the shops so parsons is recognizing that the things the family used to do so the functions of the family the things that used to 
the, the roles it used to perform in society have reduced over time. But don't be confused by this. Parsons is not saying that the family and the nuclear family is no longer important. In fact, what he is saying is that the, the nuclear family still plays in that bottom line two irreplaceable roles. And actually what he's saying is because the nuclear family has lost these other functions, it means it is in some ways more important that we keep hold of the nuclear family because there are two functions that it still performs that no other institution and no other family type can perform as well. According to Parsons, the nuclear family plays two irreplaceable roles. Murdoch said that the nuclear family plays four functions, each of which are best suited in the nuclear family. Parsons goes one step further. He's not just saying they're best suited, he's saying they are irreplaceable. You cannot have these functions without the nuclear family. So it's a really, really big claim. And Parsons is our key individual when arguing the importance of the nuclear family because he is its biggest cheerleader. The first of these two functions is called primary socialization of children. So we've already looked at the education function in Murdoch's four functions. This is just taking that one step further. So if you can write a little um, subtitle, and if you would like to draw the diagram, I've used a picture of the Simpsons, but you can draw a diagram of a father, a mother, and two or three children. Primary socialization of children is where Parsons says that the nuclear family is best placed to socialise children into the norms and values of society. Now again, remember that at the time that Parsons was writing, same-sex families did not exist, certainly legally, um, and there was a, a far less a number of reconstituted families because divorce was far more frowned upon. So really, the options we had available at the time, at the time that Parsons was writing in, were nuclear families, lone parent families, and occasional extended or reconstituted families. So he is largely comparing the nuclear family to the lone parent family. And what he says is the reason that the nuclear family is best placed to socialise children is because it contains both a mother and a father. And he goes down a very gender stereotypical route here, which is not one that is often held in modern society, certainly not by everybody, but this was 1950s America. And what he says is the father plays what he calls the instrumental role. That is a key term that you have to know. As the male, the father is naturally best placed to be the head of the household. It is part of his male anatomy, DNA, male personality, that he is best placed to be the leader of the household. And therefore his natural role is to provide for the family, to be what we call the breadwinner, the person who goes out to, to work and earns a living to support the family, but also to socialize his children through discipline and through work. It is the father who is in charge of discipline and who is in charge of encouraging his children to go out and get work and all those kind of habits like punctuality um, and, and hard working attitude that is expected in a job. The father is responsible for teaching his children how to do that. The mother plays what Parsons calls the expressive role. Again, it's a key term that you need to know. As the female, she is naturally best placed to look after the children and care for the emotional needs of her family. So she teaches her children how to be expressive, how to express their emotions. She looks after them when they're sick. She looks after them when they've hurt themselves. She teaches them how to share. She teaches them that it's okay to cry. All of these things come from the mother and her job is to raise the children, look after them, and also to, to support the emotional development of her family. Okay, that includes her husband and her children. So the father's job is to um, provide for and discipline the children. The mother's job is to care for and look after the children. And Parsons argues that when both of these come together, you have well-rounded socialization. Children who are adequately cared for and looked after by the mother, but who are also adequately provided for and disciplined by the father. 
And this is why Parsons argues that only the nuclear family can do this. Only a lone parent family would only have a father or only have a mother. They would be missing one half of this socialization. In the modern era, a same-sex family, if Parsons was writing today, he would argue that a same-sex family, if it was two men or two women, would be too heavily weighted towards either the instrumental or the expressive side, and at least one member would not be performing their natural roles. Okay, we use the word natural in inverted commas because that, this is the, the theory of Parsons, it's not you know, naturally proven um, in, in, you know, in scientific terms. So this is what Parsons is talking about when he, when he says this, this first function. Now, obviously, you can see quite clearly that many people would argue today that his views of primary socialization are outdated. You could argue that actually more and more men are adopting the role of house husband or at least sharing the responsibilities of child rearing with their female partners. So now it is legally available. Mr. Marsh did this himself when, when his daughter was born. It is legally available for many in the United Kingdom to take what's called shared parental leave with their female partners. And therefore, when they have a child, both the female and the male can have equal amount of times off to help raise that child. You also have now seen a legal introduction of same sex marriage where couples work out between themselves who is going to spend more time at work and who's going to spend more time looking after the children, if indeed that is a conversation that needs to happen. So we can see children being raised very effectively by one parent or by two parents of the same sex. And actually modern society, we haven't seen really a decline in the raising of children, even though we've seen a, a flipping of, of, of what we would seem to be you know, gender specific roles. So one of the criticisms you can make of this is that his views are simply outdated. His views were in a time when gender stereotypes were far more rigid than they are now. And we've actually seen a shift in society towards men or same sex couples uh, breaking what Parsons would see as the natural order. OK. The second of Parsons' functions is one which I'm going to explain through the image of a bath. I would like you to find some space on your page, maybe on the next page if, if you need to, and in the middle of that I would like you to draw a bathtub. And if you want to draw a stick person in the bathtub, you're most welcome to do that as well. And then on the left-hand side of your bath, I would like you to write down as many as you can, go for at least three, of the stresses of modern adult life. Now, we're living through quite a stressful time at the moment, so you might want to look at some of the more relevant, sort of up-to-date recent stresses, but also think about things that adults have to do that, that kids haven't got to do. So work or pay taxes, anything like that, that, that you often hear adults complaining about write them down things that, that you think adults find stressful and things that you know kids find stressful too we still find stressful as adults things like friendships and relationships and stuff so basically anything that stretches out an adult write it on the left hand side on the right hand side of your bath i'd like you to write down completely aside from the stresses of adult life just write down how having a warm bath makes you feel now if you hate baths pretend for a minute that you don't hate them um, and think about how typical, you know, bath times make most people feel. So generally, it's a sign of relaxation, isn't it, and calmness. So again, three, maybe more um, adjectives which best describe how a warm bath makes somebody feel. The reason I'm asking you to do this is because the second of Parsons' two irreplaceable functions that the nuclear family performs is called the stabilization of adult personalities, but it's known as the warm bath theory. So before we look at what's on the screen, I'd like you to just visualize something for me. So maybe just sort of turn your eyes away from the screen. I'd like you to think about a child learning how to ride a bicycle. Now, I don't know how you learned to ride a bicycle. I don't even know if you have learned to ride a bicycle or you still can't r ride one. But most children, when they are learning to ride a bicycle, have what we call stabilizers on them. And, and you think back to what these are and they're kind of you've got your bike as it is normally. And then on the back wheels, you have these two 
little sort of side wheels that one goes either side of the rear wheel and it kind of balances the bike and it means that because you haven't quite yet got the hang of how to stay upright on the bike it means you don't keel over and fall flat on your face which is always really handy when you're learning to ride a bike so we use these stabilizers to basically make sure that the bike doesn't fall over and the person doesn't fall off it's 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 a stabilizing process it's keeping the bike going Parsons uses this word stabilization in a very similar way to stabilizers on a bike. What he argues is in order to have a happy society, we need to have happy families. Again, I'm going to use another analogy before I talk about what's on this screen. And it's going to be a really strange analogy. Imagine that you are your phone. OK, imagine that you are your phone. Every night you plug your phone in to charge. And the only reason that you can use your phone tomorrow is because it has been charging overnight. If you went to bed tonight and you plugged your phone in to charge, but you hadn't turned the plug on at the wall, you would wake up and your phone would be on, what, 10% battery? And you'd be livid, you'd be so annoyed, but your phone wouldn't function properly tomorrow because it's only got 10% battery left. So you've either got to plug it back in again and you can't use it for a little while, or you can only use it for an hour or so before it dies. Your phone only functions if the plug works. Now imagine you are your phone. Your plug, your going on charge, is your family home, all right? Your home environment, wherever, wherever you call home. Parsons and other functionalists argue that society is best when people are happiest and most fulfilled. And that only happens if their base, their charging point, their family is successful, happy, well-established, calm, pleasant environments. Because unhappy families lead to unhappy people. Unhappy people lead to unhappy societies. So the family is the charging point of society. It's the central core of society. Happy families, happy people, happy societies. Back to the screen. Parsons talks about the family being like a warm bath. After a long day at work, the father, who plays the instrumental role, will be carrying a lot of stress. He will be going to work. His boss might be uh, shouting at him for not completing a certain project on time. He probably had to wake up at about half five in the morning to get the train into London. Um, he has to work all through his lunch break. He doesn't really have any, any lunch because he's been working so hard. So he's grumpy and he's hangry. Um, his, he was asked to stay a whole hour later at work because someone else in his team didn't finish their project in time. He's coming home and there's a delay on the trains because there's some leaves stuck on the line. And for some reason, British transport can't deal with leaves on the line. So this, this, this father is an hour late home. So he's stressed and he forgot his umbrella that morning. And the weatherman said it was going to be sunny tomorrow and it wasn't and it rained. So he's wet and he's soggy and he's got a hole in his shoes so his socks are soggy and his socks have got a hole in them so his toes are soggy and he's an hour late home and this man is peed off. He's stressed, he's angry, he's annoyed. He walks through the front door and as he opens the front door he smells the lovely dinner, the lasagna and the garlic bread that's been put on the table ready for him. His wife, playing the expressive role, takes his coat, gives him a kiss on the cheek, says, welcome home. He sits down with his kids who are charming and lovely and never don't laugh at his jokes. They always laugh at his jokes, just like you always laugh at my jokes. And they and they and they're just so lovely and they have a dinner together where they hold hands and give thanks for the day they've had and they sing a song and all of his stresses disappear. Now I'm I'm saying this because it's it's obviously a little bit extreme, isn't it? You know, families aren't really like this, and we'll we'll come to that later. But Parsons argues that the best nuclear families are like this. 
that fathers can come home from stressful days at work and like sinking into a warm bath, they can just forget all of the stresses of their day, which means that the next day they're able to go back out, recharge their batteries, recharge, linking it to our analogy of the phone, and they're able to go back out into society once again to be the best worker that they can be. The role of the nuclear family is to stabilise adult personalities. If we didn't have these stabilisers in place, the warm, welcoming environment, then adult personalities might fall apart. Just like you didn't have stabilisers on a bike, the child would fall off the bike. The adult personalities would, would crumble if they didn't have a chance every evening to unwind and relieve the stresses of their day. OK, I'm going to move on. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to write an advert for the nuclear family. Now, the reason I'm asking you to do this is because Parsons is very idyllic when he talks about the nuclear family. He, he, he thinks of it as such a perfect family. There's nothing that can go wrong with this. This, you know, here is a father who is disciplinarian and providing for his children. Here is a mother who is caring and nurturing and loving. And the two of them combine to socialize the children in a brilliant way. And the father comes home from work and everything is wonderful and he's no longer stressed and he's able to enjoy his evening and go back to work the next day. This is such an idyllic version of the family that we know just isn't the case in modern society. But Parsons writes it as if it is an advert. He writes it as if it is a, a, a perfect, picture perfect family. So I'd like you to do the same. I'd like you to explain what he believes about the family in the, the form of an advert. You need to stress that yes, the, the nuclear family has lost certain roles such as, but it is still as important as it once was because. What, what two roles does it perform? What kind of roles can men look forward to playing and what kind of roles can women look forward to playing? And make sure that you include examples all the way through. So examples of the roles that it's lost, examples of the, the um, things women can do in the family and men um, and examples of how the nuclear family acts as a warm bath. Now, remember, this is very gender stereotypical, um, but Parsons is writing from a functionist perspective in the 1950s, hence why that is. OK, as we do with all of our sociological perspectives, we have to criticise them once we have learned about what they think. So we're going to be criticising both Murdoch's and Parsons' view of the nuclear family. And I've got four pictures here which will hopefully help us to, uh, to summarise these criticisms. The first one is one that is definitely applicable to both Murdoch and Parsons, but certainly Parsons more than Murdoch. This is what's called rose tinted glasses. The picture on the top left gives you a helpful analogy of what that is. Rose tinted glasses is an analogy that we use, a metaphor that we use for when you look at a situation that is really bleak, but you look at it and you're kind of pretending or you're looking through a, a lens which makes it seem better than it really is. You're almost delusional to an, ex to an extreme. On the top left picture there, we have a city that is obviously covered in rain and, and, and looks really kind of unpleasant, but the spectacles make it look like it's a beautiful sunset. All right. What functionists can be criticised of doing, and certainly what Parsons can be criticised of doing, is actually ignoring the darker side of family life. There has been, in 2020, a rise in cases of domestic abuse being reported. We see families as deeply unharmonious places a lot of the time in school. You, you know it yourselves. Maybe you haven't got such a, a happy home life as Parsons imagines. We can say that functionists definitely see families as purely harmonious and actually ignore some of the darker realities that goes on. 
Not all families leading on from this operate as warm baths. Some are places of tension where actually stress levels are high. For some people, they have to leave their family home in order to reduce their stress levels. Coming home to the family is not a stress relieving place, it is a stress inducing place. And again, this is a criticism of functionalists ignoring some of the darker sides of family life. You'd also need to be aware that Murdoch and Parsons, as I've said throughout the two videos, were both studying families in the 1940s and 50s. This is before Rappaport and Rappaport in the 1980s, and therefore their ideas are outdated. The family types they're talking about have changed. We see more family types, such as same-sex family types, and we have seen different rates of family diversity in both the UK and America since they were writing. So we can't just take their writings and say these are the, the only perspectives because modern life is different now to what it was back then. Also, if we're looking at what feminists would say, they would also argue that Murdoch and especially Parsons assume outdated gender stereotypes which imprison women in their own homes. And we're going to talk later about what feminists view about the nuclear family. Um, and a lot of that is the, the idea that women um, in Parsons' model are expected to stay at home, remain tied to housework and childcare, and are not able to pursue a career of their own. Finally, Murdoch and Parsons also focus predominantly on middle class white families in America and ignore diversity in terms of ethnicity, race or culture. So we cannot say that the white middle class American nuclear family is the same as the um, black middle class British family or the white working class British family or uh, a family in the middle of Indonesia or a family in the middle of Peru. There are some similarities, as we've seen in the videos last lesson, but there are also huge cultural and economic differences. So they are, they are taking one small snapshot of the family and suggesting that all nuclear families are like this. So that is today's lesson on Parsons and the family. I hope it makes sense. I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Thanks very much.